C sharp programming using more advanced arrays. And in this one, we're going to create a program uh, that declares an array of 10, in 10 integers. We're going to call a method called fill array. And let's go ahead and do that right now. So in the main method, I'm going to create an array of integers and call it nums. And I'm going to set this array uh, for 10 elements. Okay, and I already have a method called fill array and I'm passing to fill array an array uh, of integers and I'm giving it the name array. Okay, so an array is a list of values, in this case integers, uh, located in the computer's computer memory starting at a location in the computer memory. So the first value would be at, say, computer memory uh, 101. That would be the starting location of the first value, the first integer value. And then consecutively, the other values would come after it. When I pass an array, say, for example, I pass this array, when I pass it, what I do is I actually pass that starting location to this to this array. Well, let's see what's next. So in my method called fill array, I'm going to create an integer data type. And since it's going to be fixed throughout the program, I'm going to say that this is a constant. So my tradition, you put the variable name in uppercase, and it's going to be fixed at 999. You can make this whatever you want it to be. Um, and then I'm creating an integer called entry, assigning the value 0 to it. If I wanted to, I could put these all on the same line. Um, and position and assigning the value zero to that. Please enter an integer or 999 to quit. And <clears throat> have a while loop so that it stays within the framework of what we want to use for our fill array. And when we're done, we can return a value. So in the definition here, public, we'll look at that when we start making a, uh, our own classes, whether public or private is, is appropriate. Static and and in the textbook it gives you a, a pretty good definition of, of static and, and when to use it. For now it's just uh, a way to keep things in memory while the program's running. Um, makes better sense when we actually use these in an example, but um, so, and then uh, what type of information is going to be returned? An integer data type. And then we come up with an, a, na a name for the array and what we're passing to it. Okay. Okay, so that's the fill array. Let's, we've got another one to do here which is uh, statistics. 
that accepts out parameters. Okay, for the highest value in an array, lowest value, sum of the values in the array, and the arithmetic average. All right, so let's do that one. Okay, so we're passing in array called array, integer value ELS, and then we're using the keyword out and the integer high value and the integer low value. And this out keyword means that we're, we can actually change this uh, throughout the program. Uh, we're passing it by reference. Um, difference between reference and out means that I don't have to declare this variable before I don't have to assign a value to it before I pass this this uh, variable. Okay, uh, out low value the sum and then the average. Okay, so we take the array and we generate all of these values. Okay, and void means that we're not returning anything. So w if you return a value like we did here, you can only return one value from, uh, from your method. Uh, if I pass by reference, I can change all of these values so I don't have to return anything from my method. Okay, um, in my main method, I better declare these and call my methods. So, so integer data type, number of elements, uh, the average, the sum, and I kind of prefer putting these on the same line. Okay. Okay. So let's see if that satisfies. And at the end of this, I'm going to do a uh, read line and since I'm using the static system console I don't need that okay let me try this and see if this runs debug start debugging Okay, looks like that worked. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave it there. And paste that in and see if it works.